More slices, more slices, more slices. Circle, not a circle. Circle, not a circle. If you were going to find the area of a circle, how would you do it? And let's assume that we don't know the formula for the area of the circle. Let's assume that we are the first person who's ever seen a circle and we wanna figure out its area. Obviously, one thing we can't do is what we do with rectangles, where we just take a ruler and we measure out the base of the rectangle, the height of the rectangle, and then multiply those two quantities together. Because as you look at a circle, of course, there are no polygons or are there? Let's imagine taking our circle and splitting it up into several triangular wedges. And what we're going to do is be very clever about how we rearrange those wedges. We can let those wedges be as small or as large as we want. We'll start with kind of medium. We're gonna split the circle up into eight pieces and we're gonna rearrange those pieces so that they kind of look like a parallelogram. The trick is that the top and the bottom of this parallelogram each represent half of the edge of the circle. That is their half of the total circumference of the circle. The circumference of the circle, of course, is 2 pi r, so each half of that would be pi r. So we know the base of this parallelogram. We also know at least the slant height of this parallelogram because that's the radius of the circle itself. Now the problem right now is we would need to do some kind of fancy trigonometry to figure out the straight up and down height of this parallelogram if we wanted to use something like the area formula for a parallelogram, where we are going to multiply the length of the base of that parallelogram times the length of that straight up and down height. But if we decide we don't wanna mess with that, we don't wanna actually figure out what that straight up and down height is, we'd much prefer to use that slanted height, which again, we know matches the radius of the circle itself. Then one option we have is, let's just massively increase the number of slices of this circle. You can see that as we increase the number of slices, this shape, which was a parallelogram, gets more and more rectangular. Again, back in circle form, it's still the circle it's just sliced up into many tiny pieces. When we slice it up enough and then turn it back into that parallelogram form, we can tell it's actually becoming a rectangle. What was that slant height of R is actually the same as the up and down height when these wedges get small enough. Treated that way, of course, this is basically a rectangle itself where our base is that half of the circumference, pi R, and our height is the radius R, and there you have it, pi R times R r gives us our area formula pi r squared. Now you might be objecting right now and I would totally understand that because our slant height of r definitely isn't the same as our straight up and down height. It's not even the same even if we do something like go to a thousand pieces. Obviously it's so close at this point that we would really really want to just go ahead and substitute r but we might think you know what that's still an approximation. It's not close enough. This is where the tools of calculus come in. We don't need to stop at a thousand wedges of this circle. We don't even need to stop at a million or a billion wedges of this circle. We can imagine slicing up this circle into literally infinitely many tiny triangular wedges, and those infinitely many tiny triangular wedges genuinely have a straight up and down height of r, and essentially a base by themselves of an infinitesimally small number as close to zero as you want, but that when you add them all back together, when you line them up, happen to add up to pi r. The true innovation of calculus is giving us a way to do this that's rigorous enough that mathematicians can accept, okay, this truly is describing the object itself, it's not just an approximation anymore, and therefore we can say the area of a circle is pi r squared. If you would like to check out this graph and play around with it yourself, the link is up here. I believe it's gonna be bit.ly slash circle area desmos, but for sure I'll put that down in the description. Check that out, play around with the wedges, make as many as you want. I originally saw this illustration in a Steven Strogatz article in the New York Times, and so I will also link to that article down in the description. Please like the video, subscribe if you wanna see more math videos like this, and otherwise I will see y'all next time.